Why do stocks fall when interest rates rise? Now, obviously this is not going to be something that is true on a minute by minute or even day by day basis, but in general, over the long term, we see a correlation between uh, interest rates rising, stocks falling, or vice versa, interest rates falling, stocks rising. In fact, since 1980, when interest rates peaked and have only been on the decline since then, overall long term, stocks have done the exact opposite. So why does this inverse relationship between interest rates and stocks exist? Two reasons, slowing economic growth and competition for capital. Ready? Let's dive in. There are two main reasons why interest rates going up tends to correlate with stocks going down. The first reason is economic growth slowing or economic decline. During periods of time when interest rates are rising, here's the dynamic that is going on. Debt gets more expensive. Now, not the debt that you already have, as long as it's fixed rate. Any adjustable rate debt does get more expensive. Credit card rates go up, adjustable rate mortgages will go up. So any adjustable rate debt does get more expensive in real time. Any other debt that's fixed rate, like mortgages, many car loans, those are fixed. But many times that fixed rate debt is being rolled over. It's being paid off before it comes due and then it has to be replaced by new debt. And an example of this is you move from one house to another. If interest rates have gone up in between the time that you bought your house and you're buying your new house, that means that the interest portion of the mortgage is gonna be larger, which means that the overall house price you can afford is a lot lower. More of your payment is just going to interest. Across the economy for households and corporations, as debt gets more expensive, the incentive is pay off the debt. You have to start paying off that debt to make that debt service easier or at least the same as it used to be. Now with the fractional reserve banking system, what is vital to understand about this is that debt is loaning money into existence. When you swipe your credit card at the store to pay for your groceries, that's not money that was just sitting in somebody else's savings account that is now being loaned to you through the bank. That money did not exist before you swipe the card. It came into existence and landed at the grocery store's bank account. That new money then starts circulating into the economy. That means when debt is paid off, the supply of money is actually shrinking. Every time you pay off a loan, you're taking money that was circulating in the economy to buy and sell things, and you're taking it out of circulation, paying off debt, and it's evaporating, it no longer exists. So as the cost of debt rises, the amount of debt shrinks in order to maintain the uh, affordability of, the, of servicing the cost of that debt, which means that the supply of money shrinks. Now it may not every time end up being where the total supply of money actually goes down, but maybe the rate of growth of money was going up at 5% and now it's only going up at 3%. So the growth rate of money starts decelerating. Now, as there is less money in circulation, there is less money chasing the same amount of goods and services and assets, which means money becomes more scarce relative to the total pool of wealth assets, goods, services. We know the relationship of prices is one of relative scarcity. So if money becomes more scarce relative to all the stuff, that means all of the stuff must get cheaper because each individual unit of money becomes more valuable relative to all the stuff. It takes less money to get that stuff. As prices drop, income drops because income is just the cost of labor and the cost of everything is dropping when the money supply is dropping. This leads to a little bit of a snowball effect, especially if you're moving from a position of a wide base of money that was expanded based on easy and cheap credit. This leads to a snowball effect where incomes start dropping, asset prices start dropping as assets are getting sold to service debt and pay regular income. And at some point, the players that are the most over leveraged with the highest debt service costs and the least ability to increase or maintain their income start to become insolvent. Bankruptcy starts rolling through the system. Default starts rolling through the system and interest rates will go up even more to compensate for the higher risk of the slowing economy and default. So that is the first reason why interest rates going up tends to result in stocks dropping. Rising interest rates causes economic slowdown, which is bad for asset 
asset prices. This leads to the second reason, which is competition for capital. Because as the cost of debt increases for the borrower, the benefit to the lender increases. As investors look around and they watch the price of their risk assets like stocks start to drop and they look at the yield that they can get on debt, it starts to become more and more attractive. Now you might be laughing at that thinking, hey, interest rates are one or 2%. Who is looking at that and saying, hey, that's an attractive yield. I should sell my stocks to buy that. But if your stocks are dropping by five or 10% in a year, and that debt after one year pays you back with all the principal plus interest, then technically relative to the stocks, that is a better investment. It might not be keeping up with inflation, but it's doing better than the stocks that are dropping. So investor mentality starts to shift from a risk perspective saying, hey, I'd like to take on additional risk for the chance of higher rewards and saying those rewards aren't there. So now I'm gonna shift to something that's safer that'll definitely get repaid back plus interest because then at, I, I'm losing to inflation, but at least I'm not losing more than that. And as interest rates continue to rise because of the economic slow down that we just talked about, that debt becomes more and more and more attractive, especially because in a bankruptcy situation, if the company has to be liquidated and then all the remaining funds are paid out, the lenders are paid first. If you own a bond, you are a lender to a company, they will pay you first any remaining uh, balance from the asset sales from the liquidation. Shareholders get paid last because if you're a shareholder, you're an owner. That means you've borrowed. And so when everything goes under, you're an owner, you have to pay that back. So the creditors are paid first. And so those are technically considered between stocks and bonds, the less risky asset. And that's why they usually have lower returns. So in a rising interest rate environment, the economy starts to slow down. Debt servicing costs becomes more expensive and a snowball effect happens that leads to a shrinking of the money supply or at least a slowdown in the growth of the money supply. This causes prices of everything, including assets, to fall. This causes the attitudes of investors to shift from seeking risky, high reward assets into safer alternatives. And so the bonds that are starting to increase their yield and increase the interest rate that they're paying out to lenders start to become more and more attractive to investors. Now I have to finish this up by saying all of this is the general mechanism of what investors in general are doing as a result of these things happening. It does not mean that I think debt is a less risky option to invest in right now or that it's a more attractive option. As many have said right now, debt is return free risk. You're guaranteed to lose money to inflation at the best and at worst, you, could, you might lose it all. So I hope that explanation helps. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. Finally, I will be speaking at an event in Dallas on March 5th. I would love to see you there. If you'd like more information, I've got the sign-up link in the description below. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.